Hi, it's Scott from Scott's Permaculture. I'm just standing here in a forest in Tasmania, a natural old growth forest in Tasmania, a place called Fern Glade. And uh, they had a very, very large flood event here just recently. But because this is wilderness, this really quickly starts to regenerate. So even though that flood event was only a month or so ago, you can actually see signs that the forest is already regenerating the streams, the banks, and so on. So we'll have a bit of a look through the forest. So this is a cold temperate forest with a reasonably high rainfall. And you can see that the understory is pretty much dominated by tree ferns, or what they call here Tasmania band ferns. Now, we had a pretty big rain of it yesterday. But have a look at the water. There's a little bit of muddiness in it, but predominantly the water is quite clear and it's safe to drink. So this is, this is what happens when you have a natural environment that glues the soils together using the humus from all of the leaves and debris that's fallen down and it sticks the soil together so you don't get massive runoff as you do in agricultural areas when you have a big rain of it. The overstory in this forest is eucalypts. And you can see by the straightness of the trunks that they are getting a lot of very good nutrients. Some of these eucalypts in this forest are well over 100 metres tall. So what we're looking at here is ground cover. So we've got rushes or vetch. We've got mosses and lichens. We've got ferns, bracken fern. You can see a new bracken fern here. You can actually eat the tops of this bracken fern it's actually food. Yum. Very nice. Now on the bank over here you can actually see where the man ferns have been pushed over by the, the flood event. But have a look at those man ferns that have been pushed over. They're actually striking down the trunk and are already started to re-establish themselves. Before long there will be all the, all the species that were originally there will start to grow back again. This is nature repairing itself when you have a high level of diversity uh, in what's around you. This will not occur if you've chopped down most of your trees and eliminated most of your species. So what are the lessons that we can learn from nature when we try to recreate that in an edible landscape like a food forest or a forest garden? Well have a look at the way the plants are arranged. Have a look at the diversity that we've got here different types of plants in different places all of which tend to be well, holding the uh, soil together and adding the types of nutrients that we need in the soil. The first plant here would undoubtedly be the tree fern followed by another which is a sassafras or dogwood you can see the trunk of it going through here and you can see the canopy up here quite a big tree it's grown after the, the tree fern we look down the tree fern and we start to see other symbiotic relationship here as well. We have another plant that's colonised the trunk right here of the tree fern. There's another one down here and another one over here. And the tree fern itself is also sprouting from the trunk as well. And when you look at the whole lot, you've got a really, really good example of plants that want to live together and that will work effectively together. So the lessons are pretty clear for us. When we make our edible landscape, we mimic nature. We add diversity because diversity helps replenish after a big event. We also make sure that we have the right plants in the right places and the right symbiosis between the plants. So when you're planting your food forest, think really carefully about where you're going to put your plants. Start with your major overstory plants and then start to plan where you put your understory plants. More soon. See you next time.